I feel like this season is going to begin with perfect symmetry. Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. This is Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2019. It's episode number 59. Perfect symmetry. Well, look at my starting five. At 6'4", Al Morrison. At 6'5", Derek Kennedy playing the shooting guard position. At 6'6", Nigel Porter. At the power forward, it's Udonis Cougar. Standing at 6'7". And finally, at center, Jim Ross, standing six foot, eight inches tall. Each one, one inch taller than the previous, just feels right. What also feels right is the quality of this lineup. Four and a half star, four star, three star, five star, four and a half star, yeah, five star. For the first time on my roster, as far as I can remember, we have a five-star player. I've had a couple four-and-a-half stars. We've got three players that are four-and-a-half stars or better. I've got another two players that are four stars because our sixth man, freshman Charles Kennedy, four stars already. Also in support, two three-and-a-half star players and two three-star players, meaning we have a two-deep of every player three stars or better. Now, the one weakness, Nigel Porter, small forward. He's only a three-star guy. However, he's actually a really good defender. That's what he's there for. That's what he's in the lineup for. So he's a 59 on defense, 26 blocking, 31 steals. A decent rebounder, 30. That certainly could be better. But handling, 49. He's not likely to turn the ball over much. Passing might get away from him every once in a while but ultimately his rating is what it is because he's only a 28 score he's got to be like a single attribute point away from being a three and a half star guy technically will massage who started last season as a walk-on player for us is three and a half stars He's better handling, better steal rate slightly, but that's actually a just about it. His defense is only a 38, so he doesn't start. My bench, all of them are capable of scoring, just not quite as good as the starters, and defensively, Pretty dang good. Three players above 50 in the 11 deep. Overall, the entire team, seven players above 50 on defense. And Houdonis Cougar, a 65. Yeah. Team's looking pretty good for this season. Speaking of season, well, let's try to get to it. Season's ready to start. We've got UNLV and St. Francis, Clemson, Northwestern all coming up. That's some big matchups. Clemson's in Conference B, so is UNLV. Uh, St. Francis, the first matchup, though, we are finally that team that is so dominant that we're almost guaranteed to win. Nigel Porter, we're going to see this a lot, though. A little bit off from others. You can see there are going to be some vacancies. We're losing two starters at the end of the year in Kennedy and Cougar. But, of course, we have the other unrelated Kennedy who is certainly ready to step into a starter's role really already. But when you have guys of that quality, you have guys of that quality, and you don't necessarily just jump straight in. A thing we're going to look at, though, before that first game, recruiting. Boy, oh boy, it got tight. We got down to the last seven players on our shortlist. We didn't necessarily get all the ones we wanted because, well, there were a few of the top players in the entire nation available. And yes, for that first time, we did go for those top 25, if you didn't see the last episode. And we still not quite there. The prestige, it was quite clear early on that... Those top 15 especially were out of reach still. 
But top 25, not completely out of reach, and really for the first time. So, we pick up power forward Thomas Roy, number 23rd in the nation. Oh, that's still... Let's update to everyone left on our list. There you go. There's still some names out there. Of course, most of them have already signed, but let's take a look. So, Jeff Wolf, number one player in the nation, going to Nevada. The number two play, player going to Michigan State. Four is going to Florida. Purdue picking up the five. Louisville, Oklahoma. Oklahoma again, back-to-back -back players. Ouch. Kansas. And there you go. We pick up a guy inside the top 25 consistently. Sixth in the nation at the power forward. That is a really big pickup for us and you can see that the big draw for him is facilities and that's what we used to recruit him kansas state getting this one ohio state pitt butler kansas oklahoma again and there we go with our second player is bernard walton a little more well-rounded but cares a little bit less about that school prestige and that's a big thing for us ranked number 37th in the nation pretty solid player and at 38 Derek Jepson so Jepson another pickup for us again high on facilities and that's what we use to recruit him and even though he's 38th now last month he was 31st last month he was third at the shooting guard position nationally so we'll see if that has anything to do with him joining our team and that lower prestige taking him down a notch or what it might have been but the quality of the three is very evident they're all A-level players and going to be a real boost going forward if we can start consistently every season recruiting top 50 players only St. Francis is not exactly an elite matchup for us. In fact, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and quick sim these first couple games, and then we'll take on UNLV or Clemson, whichever one comes first in our third game of the season. Another big thing, as we quick sim through this, for the first time in the history of our program, we open the season with a ranking. It's never happened before. And in fact, generally, we've, we've never even been ranked until well into the season. Uh, it's, it's usually been 10 plus games before we even see enough respect to, to be ranked. That's even if we're 10-0 or 9-1 or something along those lines. So first game of the season, a 30-point victory very comfortable huge halftime lead took our foot off the gas pretty early on they did lead at one point by two points very early in that game but cougar 19 points 14 rebounds great performance by him the plus minus of our starters was insanely good though Derek kennedy not so good for him but charles kennedy when he was on apparently things went really well so Solid minutes in his debut, though only five points, but he did have six assists. We shot 50% to their 27. So already a good start to the season. Already a ranking. Hopefully we can build on this though we don't have the easiest non-conference schedule I and mean, we're already facing at least two conference b opponents preseason favorite is duke to repeat as champion syracuse the number two ranked team in the country 
already with a loss. Likewise, Kansas, at number five, opened their season with a loss as well. My alma mater and another one of the favorites, Oregon, one and one. North Carolina State, two and one. So a lot of Conference A opponents already taking a bit of a beating to open the season. This could be a good thing for us. Next up is Northwestern. They're a pretty good team, and we're on the road. So this is actually would have been a decent game to watch, but I'm waiting for those two Conference B opponents at least. Northwestern's up there, but not quite that high. We get the victory on this one. You have been you have been you have been we have a lot of mail. Alright, so 79-62. Very comfortable for a road game against a, a fairly quality opponent. Northwestern is not a pushover. They're certainly not A status. I would put them on the edge of B status, you know, like B minus quality program. They're certainly up there and competitive relatively often. Jim Ross with 19 points today. Cougar 15. Kennedy had 13. Smith 14 off the bench for him. Big day. Uh, Charles Kennedy in his second game gets five assists. Al Morrison had five. Uh, Nigel Porter fouled out and had no points on the day. He is definitely not there to do offense, but that is not a good start. Massage wasn't any good either, and he was a minus three. So, yeah. Uh, some of those small forward minutes, though, are going elsewhere. Uh, you can see our guards played a ton of minutes. Some of that is because they are rotating into the three a bit. So Masich is not scheduled for a ton of minutes. Alright, well we get letters of intent from each of the players that have already committed to us. Okay, another Conference E in Western Kentucky, so another quality opponent coming up. Uh, Northwestern was Conference E. Let's see, how was that matchup, by the way? Oh, 90%. Is Western Kentucky similar? It, it is. Okay, I think we are, this season anyway, finally hitting A status? Possibly. We'll see. How do we compete with Clemson? And yes, yes, UNLV, 84 that's the toughest matchup we've had so far. Is that going to be on the road or home? Doesn't say there. I think it does here. Ooh, that is a road game. That is a road game. So is Clemson. They're both road games. Not going to be easy. Very well could split them. Even though we're heavy favorites two road games against two really good opponents is exactly that. It's two road games against two really good opponents, meaning even though you might be better, that doesn't mean you're going to win them both. And to find the odds has been something we have done as a team throughout. If you haven't figured it out by now, we are in Conference A. But prestige-wise, quality-wise, on paper, we're not at their level. We are not Conference A material. We are now Conference B material. And this is really the first time that those scouting reports, scouting reports suggest that we are more than what we've been. So many times we've been 40% favorite and come out on top again and again. And we've lost games where we were favored, but not many. We've won a lot of games where we were not the favored team, that we were the underdog.
All right, so Clemson Tigers, road game, big matchup. And Clemson opens the game with a very quick three-pointer and another. So both teams opening almost perfect from the field. And we find ourselves with a small deficit early on. But after an and one there, the deficit grows and a lot of momentum going Clemson's way. But two quick buckets right before I was about to take a timeout and the score is back down to six. Got the ball on offense, chance to move, but there's a turnover. And now the momentum is finally going our way. But Clemson trading buckets and keeping us from building any actual momentum. And it's 22-17. Uh, rebounding, we're at a deficit of two, but turnovers is a plus two. We are shooting 50% from the field, which is nice. But Clemson is 10 for 12, 11 for 13, 85%. I have never seen anything like that. We're only down by a handful. That's something, considering we're 0 for 4 beyond the arc, and they are nearly perfect from the field, and it's only 28-26. They can't maintain that. They're not going to maintain that. In fact, it's already starting to show, right? They've missed two more shots out of their last three attempts. Now they've missed a, a third shot in the last four or five attempts. So they are starting to show that they are human, and already we've tied this game. We're supposed to have this amazing defense, but it definitely did not get off to a quick start. But either way, regardless of how you look at it, we just built an eight point lead. And yet somehow we've done it without any momentum whatsoever. We're on a 10-0 run, and yet Clemson has the advantage and the momentum. Okay, are you going to take that timeout? I've clicked on the button like five times before it actually gave me the timeout. And Clemson had their own little 8-0 run before we finally get four points to uh, end the half with a small lead. Crazy first half to this game. But that's already coming down and it's going to continue. They are not going to finish this game above 50% over my dead body, hopefully. <laughs> Quick start to the second half, we're up 52-41. Rebounding's are rebounds are level, turnovers plus ten. There's that defense starting to show. But somehow Clemson 60% from the field still. 50% beyond the arc. But we're coming along in that department. We were at 0% earlier, we're over 30% now. It's all contributing to this lead that we have here early in the second half. But it's at 10 and it's definitely far from over with the team shooting the way Clemson did for a while. They're very capable, clearly, of getting that round ball through that round hoop again and again. Starting to get a little bit of a rebound advantage now. Slender growth to the lead. It's now to 15 instead of 10. We're doing a lot of rapid changes to the offense and the defense here recently. And this mix and match is working out pretty well for us because now it's a 20 point lead. Rebounds now hit plus eight. Clemson has settled down on the turnovers, but that field goal percentage again is getting lower and lower and lower, 54% now. And we're sitting on 50% ourselves. So we've gone from 40 to 50%. They've gone from 60% down to 52, and that's where this lead's really coming from. Though at the moment it's down to 15. Clemson got a little run going there. Free throws helping. We're getting there a bit, and we're making a fair few. I'm still shocked at how well Clemson is, is shooting the basketball. It's crazy. I know, come on. Lead was under 10. Still momentum going Clemson's way. They are at home. But we've got it. 
It's in the bag. Final seconds. 93-79. Final score. We got him to 50%. So, much better in the second half. And while they close the gap a little bit in the final minutes, we do come away with what still is ultimately a comfortable victory. And if they hadn't shot nearly 100% from the field for the first half of the first half, it would have been a blowout. So if that's what it takes for a team to hang with us, be at home and nearly 100% from the field for more than 10 minutes, I think I could work with that because I don't think we're going to see that again anytime soon. 3-0 to start the season. Rank already jumped to 14th. That was prior to the game we just played. Duke, the curse of I don't know what's going on in this game, 2-0. Yet, they dropped from 1st to 6th. Well, I get that Georgia Tech and Oklahoma are 6-0. and That's a factor. Uh, we're not going to watch this game, UNLV. Non-conference really is not a major factor. It's non-conference. has an impact on your tournament seed. But there's so much more going on in the season that makes your conference record matters so much more. And this is the tournament. So we're into the tournament now. Uh, Advocare, we beat UNLV 87-74 in the first round. 15-point halftime lead. Never trailed. A lot of lead changes, but that's because of ties. Early on, Jim Ross, 13-13. He's our lucky man tonight. Morrison had 14 points. Derek Kennedy had 20 points and 9 rebounds. The only one who seemed to struggle was Matt Gordon with a minus 14. Kind of one bad stretch in that game. But the Invitational continues and we've got Duke. Yeah. Uh, which Advocare? There we go. So we have Duke, player of our game, will play Virginia and UCLA. And you can see we're still lacking respect. We were the five seed. UNLV was the four seed. They're in Conference B. We're in Conference A. We played in the national championship a year ago, and we still only go to this Invitational as a five seed and now have to play Duke, the very same team that we just played in the national championship game last year. And they got one of many championships historically. Oh wow, there's Western Kentucky who were about to play in our, I don't know, next game or something. It's who Duke just beat by 10. Virginia beat Minnesota, UCLA beat Tulsa. Did we just win by 14? Was that the first score that I saw flashed up there? I think it might have been. I, I want to say that I saw a score line of 74-60. We are 5-0. So we had Duke their first loss of the season. I, I would love to see the scatter report for Duke, but at the same time, don't want to see it. Okay, 74-64, but I have an injured player. <sighs> okay, that's okay. It's Will Massage. Uh, starter last year, but he's a walk-on, and he was definitely filling in. Nigel Porter, not a ma major upgrade, but I think a, a minor upgrade. And I'm okay with that. We play UCLA in the next round. UCLA is just ranked. I don't want to see the scouting report necessarily for Duke. I'm trying to save that one. Central Connecticut's 0-4, Mississippi Valley State's 2-2. Here is UCLA from Conference F now. Wow, they have dropped down a bit. And we are 87% favorites. We don't need to watch this. Invitational. Hopefully victory. RPI just jumped to 2 
after beating Duke, and our rank just jumped top five. We're number five in the nation. You can't see it, but I'm smart. Can we finish off this Invitational with a win? We go 6-0. and 89-48. What? The, le the, the lead kept stretching to the end. So our largest lead was the one at the end. We led the entire way. 32-8 for points in the paint. They couldn't get inside at all. Between Ross and Cougar, we gave up eight points in the paint. Morrison had 25 and five. I'm in awe. That was an invitational. It's not a real title, but that was still for a tournament win. Cougar had 14, seven, six. Almost 50% from the field. They were at 30. We doubled them up on assists. Plus 16 on rebounds, plus 7 on steals, plus 10 on turnovers. Outside of the blocks, they had 16. Colin Kent had 7 blocks himself. Wow, good job, kid. But you can have that, because we're 6-0. and Ranked number 5 with the second best RPI in the nation. That I like a lot better than than the other factors. So I'm okay, okay, letting you have seven blocks. You could be Superman for a day, even if your name's not Clark. But it is C. Kent. So I know who you really are. And I know what's about to happen with Western Kentucky as well. Well, we're going to win. Yeah, that's right. We're going to win a game. Feels good to be sure. I'm going to laugh when it doesn't happen because Will Masich is out. So we're going to lose because he's injured, right? Wrong. <laughs> There's another injured player, though. And it's Justin Smith, the backup center. He's got back spasms. Now there's... A little bit of impending doom there's the threat of a loss coming as we as the AI sorts out what to do with those minutes and I'm not going to bother with it Sixty-six forty-one. 41 uh, I suppose we can see what happened with the minutes did we play nine Tim Thomas picked up one minute but it looks like the other minutes, well, starters picked up a bit of it. But a perfect 7-0 start to the season thus far. Uh, we're down to uh, more than a handful of undefeated teams. There's a lot on the outside of the top 25. Georgia Tech, who was number one. Just picked up their first loss. So Oklahoma looking strong. We're looking strong. Cal is looking strong so far. And there's Florida. Don't sleep on them. They're definitely one of the favorites. And I'm surprised that they're down in the rankings at all. Considering the prestige, prestige level of that program. And they're seemingly capable with that 5-0 record. All right, these guys, NJ, is that New Jersey? Uh, some sort of tech school? Oh, I, I'm not even familiar with these guys. So sorry, but we definitely should win. <laughs> right? Right. I knew you'd agree with me. North Carolina has a couple losses already on the season. We do go 8 No, We have another injury, and it's Udonis Cougar, our star, our perfect five-star player for the first time in the history of the program, 
has a sprained wrist. And we've picked up three injuries in the last three games. I am extremely thrilled. Yeah, you heard me right. I am extremely thrilled that if it's got to happen, that it's happening during what many people mistakenly call the preseason, also known as the non-conference schedule, but for the games that matter significantly more. These games matter. It's not preseason, but they certainly don't matter to the extent that other games do. And with about four games still to play, and about a month until we start the re the conference schedule, I like that our RPI is number one, and we're ranked number two, and we'll we'll get through this. None of them are major; they're minor. Uh, next game or two could be iffy. We might not come out of this with a perfect record, but holy cow, we're at the top of the rankings. <laughs> Georgia Tech still number one. Part of the reason for that is Oklahoma also picked up a loss. So now you've got Duke, who we beat. their one loss in third. Nevada, Oklahoma, Kentucky, North Carolina. There's Florida moving their way up, but still only eight, surprisingly. Miami, number 10. Cal, 12, all undefeated. Cal just picked up a loss. So the... The no loss yet group is shrinking. And we're really down to. There's Pitt, 21st, 6 0. But at least of upper tier teams, we're down to just four undefeated. And we are the highest ranked of them. And we've never been ranked number one. And there's a chance here that it could happen. Central Connecticut, 0-5. Oh if we don't win this by a thousand, we don't win it by a thousand. We win it by some other margin. Because who's gonna score a thousand points in a game? I mean seriously, come. On. We're not cocky. No, no. Just confident that even with Cougar on a sprained wrist, that we've got that game. Under control. 99, 56. What did I say? 99 points on the wall. And then you take one down, pass it around, and then there's 98 points on the wall. Not some other item that you might want to enjoy at night if you are of age. 26 points for Al Morrison. Big day for him. Five assists, 12 of 15 shooting, so very nicely done. That is super efficient. And it was a close game at halftime, but we scored the outscored them 65-26 in the second half. So, if you didn't notice, I, I know we, we talked about it because we just showed the entire game, right? Wrong, but, you know, right? The halftime talk. It's all about the halftime talk. Cougar did play 19 minutes. Only four points though, only three shots. Not hitting his free throws either, he was fouled a lot. Uh, but still more or less effective, plus three on his plus minus, and that did hurt us a bit. Uh, so handing those minutes off to others was certainly a good thing. In this case, Justin Smith also hurt. Those back spasms actually played really well, five for five with 10 points. Uh, Matt Gordon had a big day with 11. Jerry Smith played very well, four for five. We shot 62% from the field. Only 60 from the free throw line, so not, not very good there. But we certainly took care of business. Uh, I'm assuming you can hear the lawnmower, that is my neighbor. Uh, sorry, not much I could do about that. Actually turning out to be a very nice October day here and I don't know about you but I love going out this time of year and seeing the color all the color that is out there the leaves as they turn 
and as they start joining the ground, they're not as fun to pick up, but you know, it's nice to see. Mississippi Valley State, they are three and three on the season. This is how they, okay, they've only played six games. Well, we did have our tournament, but it's a little light to be at six games by mid-December. Just a little bit light. Look around, everybody else is at seven or eight played, nine played. Smith just about fully recovered. Cougar three days till he's fully recovered, but as we've already seen, he is playing through it, so he should be okay. And there we go, perfect 10 and 0 to open the season. Down to just Cougar on the injured list now, and he's down to just a couple days. Georgia Tech takes another loss. We should have gone to number one. But Duke, with one loss to their name, two, you guessed it, retakes the number one position. I'll give them one thing, though. Our RPI slipped to third. So there's two teams with a higher RPI. If Duke is one of them, I'm okay with them ranking above us. They're the defending champions. They're the best team in the country. They've got a perfect 100 prestige. And claiming that we're the second best team in the country, I'm, I'm happy with that. Florida and Miami still undefeated. Uh, Utah now appearing on the list along with Pittsburgh and Arkansas. It's early days, early days. There's a nice big matchup between Utah and Oregon in the Wooden Legacy Tournament. I'm curious to see how that one goes. Utah takes the win, 63-55. And then Oregon plays Arizona the very next day. I guess we can see from here who comes out ahead. It's Oregon, so Oregon split those. We've got the Portland Pilots this season only one and six, but we are on the road. It is our rival, and even though we're like 90% favored, and our only conference are, a rival is a rival is a rival is a rival. They're going to play like their lives depend on it. So it is not guaranteed that we win this game. You've heard me be confident about a number of games this season. I do feel like we will win this game, but I definitely wouldn't put money on it. We do get the win though, we do get the win. And again with the 99, the 99, you guys can't score one more point. Don't people want chalupas or fries or, you know, whatever? That's what they always seem to give away, at least around here. When teams get to 100, at least NBA teams, like the Blazers, my local NBA team. Which, by the way, one of my alma mater players, Sorkin, I just watched him play against the Blazers with an Israeli professional team preseason game. I was just at that game the other night. He was their star. He was the leading scorer in the game, I think. Or second second highest score in the game. Simons, Anthony Simons for the Blazers was the leading scorer in Sorkin. Then Collins, well done. McCollum, Lillard, Whiteside, none of them played. Uh, how are we looking 
here. 11 and 0. 11 and 0. We're almost there. Duke 8 and 1 now. I've never been ranked number one. And for a moment there, thought it was going to happen. Didn't. It's okay. I'm not going to cry. But we're right there, right at the edge. Uh, RPI's certainly not going anywhere, as we've only played one game this week. And it was against Conference R, 1 in 6, Portland Pilots. So that's not going to help our RPI at all. Even if it was a road victory, definitely not a boost to our RPI. You can see our 707 is probably going to drop a little bit. A bit, yeah. About 20 points. <laughs> That's quality of opponent. Carter Webb coming up, another Conference R. Princeton coming up, another Conference R. Uh, so that's not going to do us any favors either, and that should give us about 13 games. By the way, we dropped to third in the rankings now behind Oklahoma with that loss. No, wait, we didn't lose. We haven't lost. Stop punishing us for winning. Why don't they do this to... You know, like say, uh, Notre Dame. <laughs> Quality of opponent, not there. Not in real life, never there. RPI is low, especially college football where they don't play in the division and they, they play about three real games per season and then they play nine fluff teams, mostly Division two opponents or very, very, very bottom end top division teams. That's another sport. And I have a series for that one, so I'll drop it. Moving on. But I can never get enough. Dogging on Notre Dame. How they cheat the system for their own financial gain. Because of their TV deal. That's what they're all about. Uh, Gardner Webb should be an easy victory. And really looking at those last two opponents, we should conclude the non-conference schedule undefeated. I think I've done it once before. Not 13-0, I think it was a 12-0. 82-48. Next up, Princeton at home. But again, that RPI. It's not going the right direction. Now, update on the undefeated Florida. 10-0 now. Miami has picked up their first loss. Utah is still undefeated. And it looks like the others are now gone. So we're down, supposedly, to three undefeated teams in the nation. But of course, the real work begins in the conference, where we have to play Duke once or twice. And we've got to play Syracuse, and we've got to play Florida, and North Carolina, and Nevada, and Oregon. And... <sighs> A lot of quality opponents. Yeah. RPI drops to six, rank drops to five. We're going backwards. There is the real schedule beginning with Stanford 7 and 5. Take a look at that one. Heavily favored. You don't get that in Conference A. We're favored over Nevada slightly on the road. The number 10 team in the nation. That's how good we've become this year. We've done it. We, we have cracked the top tier this season with the quality of players that we have. So I might not be recruiting those top 15, 20 players yet. And it makes a difference, and it's going to be hard to win a championship without them. But I think this year, 
we very well could finish worse than we did last season because, well, we got to the championship game, right? That's, that's hard to replicate. Only two teams in the entire nation get there. I think we absolutely can get to the Elite Eight and should be a favorite to do so. I think we could easily be ranked somewhere in the top ten by the end of the season. I think we're, we've hit that status now. Final four? Maybe. You know, we might get there again. There's a lot of factors that go into it. And I'm not saying we're not going to get to the championship game again, but I, for the second time mentioning it in this episode, I, I certainly wouldn't put money on it and expect that it's going to happen. I think that would be a risky bet. Not saying it's a bet that couldn't win, but it's a risky bet. Last game of the non-conference schedule for the chance of a perfect 13 and 0. What a way to get the season started. That RPI is going to pick back up too if we continue to get wins. We do get it, but we take another injury right as we're about to start the conference schedule. Derek Kennedy's out for five days with a sore hand. 78-39. Well, for instance, those box scores are getting nastier and nastier in a good way. Morrison with 16 points. Kennedy had 14. He's got that sore hand. It shouldn't affect him much. But we are consistently shooting better than 50% from the field at every box score we've looked at. We're out rebounding. We're not committing a ton of fouls. And a lot of teams have been shooting below 35%. And we've been winning big against good opponents. So hopefully, hopefully we can carry on with this into the season. Syracuse just lost to Marquette. It's not a bad program at all. Marquette's a good team. But Syracuse just lost to Marquette. Teams are beatable this year. But with that 13-0 record, we're ready to start that part of the season, but that's going to carry over into the next episode. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Be sure to hit, hit that like button for a perfect 13-0 non-conference record. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.